Hello students, your instructor here at John Mandula with another screencast. This one, uh, Optima, part of the sans serif number one group. So right away it looks very different than other sans serifs that you've seen. Uh, the reason is there's a few reasons why. There's a very noticeable difference between the thick and thin strokes, which isn't always common in the sans serif typefaces. Another thing is the tapered um, stems. You can see here uh, letters like the P, how it's thicker, and then it gets thinner, and then it tapers back out. And the third thing is the cupping. Uh, every just about every ending has a cupping on it. Um, yeah, uh, some of the most noticeable characteristics of it besides that are individual characters. With the S, the spine is very thick here, and then it's very thin, and then it almost as if it was going to go to a serif, but it doesn't. It's just like a uh, I don't know, like a, a heavier terminal on there. That's a trademark of Optima. You'll notice that even though it has some of the kind of humanist or classical features, um, it does have a perfectly vertical stress. In other words, like you could divide this O perfectly in half on a vertical line. Uh, the T has a pretty decent size uh, finial on the bottom, and um, the I is a round dot. It's not a square. It's actually a round dot. The M, you'll notice how it tapers out or canters out quite a bit. Uh, the D is interesting in that it's curved. The middle of its curve is just a little bit higher than the middle of the letter. So it has a it's a little bit top heavy on the D. And notice the dramatic difference in letter width between something like the L, which is quite narrow, and the O and D and M, which are very wide. So again, based on Roman uh, width, the G is again that same. If I zoom in on this. The G is thick here, thin, and it gets thick again, just like the S does. It comes down here, it goes straight up, and there's no crossbar, there's no spur, there's no anything. Now the R, and there's the leg, almost connects back to the stem, it's just straight across. The F is kind of interesting, and then it gets narrow just for a little bit, and then it gets thick again uh, at the, uh, the terminal of that stroke. And the G, very elegant G. Now this type is used a lot of like, things like cosmetics. Uh, it's very clean. It has a feminist or feminine feel because of its humanist features. Let's take some examples of it in use. Uh, most recently, John McCain, when he was running for presidency, he had Mark his whole branding scheme had used, or I should say, had featured Optima as the main typeface. Again, you can see the, the cantered, I'm sorry, the um, tapered strokes, uh, the cantered out legs, and the M and then uh, the C where it gets thick again almost like it's going to go to a serif but it doesn't and again the A shows a different A and the M show the different um, widths stroke widths stroke weights used in the uh, typeface another example this is um, Slim Fest this is their old packaging actually they did a rebrand re for their packaging a year or two ago but um, even though this is customized in the are customized in the logo type, you can see that it still very noticeably is based on Optima. And the reason why is because the S is a thick spine, and it thins out, and it gets thick again, especially in the bottom there. Everywhere else, almost everywhere else, except for Optima, which is wild, they use the typeface Optima, and they actually call the product in their product line Optima. But besides these two, everywhere else, it's just straight up Optima. Here it is, there it is. Even new is Optima. You can see the different stroke weights there. Uh, so it has a, again, a very approachable, humanist, feminine feel to it. Another example of it, this is uh, an image on Flickr by Joe Clark. And you can see it's a street sign, which I don't usually see neon lighting for the typeface Optima. But um, this is nice. It's handled well. They actually do keep the, uh, the tapering of the stems and things like that in this, so that's nice. Of course, it's a customized it, so there's a pile on there, and there normally isn't. But it still looks really good. Notice how narrow the E is and how wide the M and the N are. And then below it, um, in the back of lettering, it's very noticeably it's a, a heavier weight of Optima, thick and thin strokes there. And the last one is just for fun. Somebody decided to make Optimus Prime out of Optima letter forms and call it Optima Prime. Uh, even if it's all jumbled together, you can still see it very easily is Optima. You see the Y, how it's heavy and this side and light on this side. You can see in the M it has the tapered stems. In the E you can see the dramatic difference between thick and thin. In the T you can see that very long finial on the bottom. So that is Optima.